Yes, hello, and welcome to the Tulip Airway YouTube channel. This is video number 10, uh, an appropriate time to do a 10 minute introduction to the Tulip Airway. People have asked me to do an explanation that's short so they can watch it in their coffee breaks. No problem. Now, the Tulip Airway basically comes in five sizes, five to 10 years of age, 10 to 15 years of age, adult female, adult male, big person, bronchoscopy, endoscopy, uh, uh, ET intubation. Tulips come without without um, lip guards and headbands and with. There's a Goodell for relative size. Now, where is the tulip airway placed? This is basically the crux of the matter. The tulip circumferentially seals the whole of the oropharynx like this. This is new and unique. It sits within the glossopharyngeal nerve. Only this glossopharyngeal nerve is stimulated. Therefore, you can use it in semi-conscious states, induction, recovery, all first line airway intervention. Now, what's the main competition? Well, it replaces a Goodell in, in its entirety. You won't need so many cushion face masks because you don't need the, the facial seal to ventilate. You can replace LMAs with it. You can replace LI, eye gels with it and up to about 20% of ET tubes for ENT, dental and nasal surgery. Now, in terms of how does it differ from the competition, this is an important video. It goes through how, you know, basically two consultants reported to us that two lives were saved or at least two cricothyroidotomies were saved. And it goes into the explicit details. So it's well worth uh, looking out for the evidence. This video number six tells you the real differences. So endoscopy, bronchoscopy, uh, ET intubation, ENT, dental nasal surgery. Now, how does it differ from the, the competition? Oropharyngeal location is everything, because that then leads to semi-conscious use and self-extubation. Now, what's important here is when they wake up, they have a cough reflex. You can watch two of our, our recovering patients on the YouTube channel or on the website, where you can actually see people pull these things out when they're awake and start talking. It is an alternative to emergency cricothyroidotomy. So that means, you know, if you can't ventilate on induction or extubation, you've got something to use. Bronchoscopy can be done by some um, superglottic airways, but I've yet to see an upper GI endoscopy done through one. Um, also, um, the TULIP is the only device that really is an alternative to an endotracheal tube because it forms an airtight seal above the cords. And if it's airtight, it's blood tight. Now, why is it better? Well, video three goes through all of the details and the statistics that are quite convincing. Why, and uh, video four goes even further because it demonstrates that the figures are so good that really perhaps we should be using it in place of Goodell mask at the very least. So why is it better? Single, 100% successful after a single mannequin training session. That's including inexperienced users uh, who are BLS trained. So nurses, our doctors who are not anaesthetists. What results do we get? We get bigger tidal volumes. We demonstrated that you get bigger tidal volumes for less pressure, right? So the regurgitation risk is down. You can use it anywhere in healthcare, much easier for inexperienced users. Self-recovery is everything in, in almost every scenario. So if you've had ENT, if you've got airway burns, any particular uh, scenario, self-recovery when awake, uh, really, to me, is everything. Tulip has been shown to uh, reduce costs, reduce waste, and more importantly, reduces the number of times you have to fiddle around. Right, in terms of like, what are the key advantages? I think it's uh, worth your while to watch video two relating to the cricothyroidotomy avoidance and the alternative abilities that you will gain through using a tulip. The video three and the statistics enclosed is then summarized in video number four. Okay, so what are the key objections against adopting tubit? Well, you won't be surprised to hear that everybody's worried about regurgitation and reflux. But what's been proven is that tulip airway actually increases tidal volume, but reduces the ventilation pressure required in order to do that. And that's compared to what you're doing now. So bigger tidal volumes, less pressure than a Goodell mask, which you use every day. So basically, tulip has been shown to be safer than current method. That has gone into much more detail in video five. Basically, what do the tulip airway users say? Well, this is a can't intubate, can't ventilate scenario. And the only thing that could have saved this individual was a tulip airway. Now, I'm not going to read this entirely through because I've read it before, but by all means, put it on freeze frame. It's quite convincing. 
it is a case of where a tulip uh, uh, assisted in a situation of can't intubate, can't ventilate. Not only did it manage to ventilate when nothing else could, it also then enabled intubation through that tulip. Here's another emergency scenario. Again, only a tulip airway could have helped. It starts roughly about here. Please put it on freeze frame and read that through. Now, that is from a retired consultant ethicist. So, you know, it is one to one in terms of, you know, expert opinion. Here's basically a statement relating to starved elective anesthesia. Basically, you'll notice that it, being the tulip airway, has almost completely replaced supraglottic airways. Feel free to read that through because we want this to be a quick video for you. This is another one where the operation lasted four hours and the patient was on the left side. Now, here's something that we got in this morning. This is ENT specific. I'll read this one. Good morning, everyone. I had the opportunity to try the Spirali Tulipi. Right. Now, that basically means the reinforced tulip. Right. I tested it on two patients using septoplasty surgeries, the ENT surgery. So this is the ENT long tube tulips instead of intubation. I found it very successful. I did not encounter any bleeding or leakage problems. Those, that's critical. The patient woke up very comfortably. Since they did not have any experience, any straining, they woke up without even the slightest nasal bleeding or leakage. OK, who's it for? Everybody. I'll just save you time. All our first line airways uh, interventions, starved ele elective anesthesia, 80 percent, no risk regurge types on tulip, 20 percent on induction recovery. That's when you intubate. You use the tulip for induction and recovery. What's the main application area? Again, all. Now, when you say what's the advantage? Well, if you're a nurse, ease of use. If you're a paramedic, 100% effective first time. For everybody, 250% oxygen sounds tidy. Lower ventilation uh, uh, pressure is required. Much bigger tidal volume saves money and user preference. I mean, it does seem to win on all. OK, so what's the main advantage in these application areas, right? So if you get a tulip, why does it matter in each individual place? Well, it will save lives in theatres. It will save money everywhere. Semi-conscious use is of high benefit to everybody. Self-extubation is also, you know, even the military. No intubation in ENT. Well, that's no paralysis and no risk of intubation. The, 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 the point that it's 100 percent effective first time with an inexperienced user who's been trained once, um, that's a significant step forward. You need less equipment, which saves cost and is beneficial for the environment. So what other areas of the uh, are, are, are suitable for the tulip? Well, to be honest with you, all medical facilities, all hospitals, operating theatres, A&E, ER, the wards, particularly for like the nurses, ambulances for paramedics and the military, of course. So what you really need to do from here now that you know what a tulip airway is? Um, well, I think the first thing to do is to basically watch the other videos and really understand the location and the principal function, because what you need to do is get the correct size. That's basically essential. The only mistake you'll make is using long is using the wrong size or over inflating it. But you'll, you'll get over that very quickly. Use it in a mannequin, then try it in humans. But si tr si try a size two green in an average size female and you'll get an idea of the right size uh, per patient. Now, where first? Well, I would start in operating, theater, operating theatres, more unconscious people that way. A&E and, e and, uh, e and, e and ER when things are going better. Ambulances pretty much immediately. And once your staff have been trained at least once on the wards, the military, everything very much the same because in all of these areas there's a higher requirement for ease of use and places like A&E and ER, it's a frequency of use. Now, the anaesthetist will lead the way, but we recommend that basically you, entry, you enter at every level from expert to beginner because there's uh, basic advantages for everybody in all these scenarios. Now, basically, I recommend that you demonstrate in mannequins and use those first because that's very quick to learn. It does translate to the clinical environment, unlike LMAs. Uh, learn the introduction. You know, understand the principles of seal. Watch that chin lift as the as the the cuff inflates, and understand that it's all about oropharyngeal location. You can also practice ET intubation. Now, basically, who should use it? Well, KOLs usually lead the way, but 
the tulip is for everybody so you don't need to wait because quite frankly it doesn't matter what a consultant anaesthetist thinks if you're a nurse you know in the back of a ambulance or something anyway so introduce top down bottom up every skill level so basically in order to learn how to use it watch video seven learn how to size and use a tulip airway the playlists are listed below all the videos are listed by name and number feel free to access either on the website or on the youtube channel now for the demonstration videos we've got demo one and demo two they're basically again on the playlist below videos listed by name and number i recommend you watch them and just see how big the tulips are they should stand just a little bit proud out of the mouth so that should basically assist you in understanding what a tulip airway is now um, i recommend that you watch the longer videos because they will tell you everything in a great deal more detail